uh, we're going to start opening prayer. And uh, one thing about our family is it's just always been about our faith. And uh, mom had a lot of it, a lot of struggles, but the faith is what kept her going. Jersey is one of our pillars in our family and uh, very close to Aunt Michelle, mom, and she loved him so much. Uh, so he's going to open us up in prayer, share from his heart uh, in prayer, and we're going to sing some songs. One of mom's favorite song, How Great Thou Art. Father, this evening, as we gather here in your house to memorialize Aunt Michelle, Father, we ask, Lord, that your spirit would move and minister amongst us. That, Lord, that you would bring to remembrance the times of joy and laughter that we've had with Aunt Michelle. And, Lord, we ask, God, that you as the God of all comfort would come and comfort, Lord, those who are mourning. We're grateful, Lord, that you're collecting tears in your bottle, that you are drawing near to those of broken and contrite spirit. We thank you, Father, that Aunt Michelle stands, Lord, before you in your presence and glory, where there is joy unspeakable and pleasure forevermore, Lord. We thank you, Father, that the battle is over, and she stands victorious because of you, Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you would be amongst us, Lord, as we're gathered in your name, that you would exalt your name through the teaching of your word, that you would use this time as we come from far and wide to, to help draw us closer, Lord, to you and to each other. Father, we ask, Lord, for her most immediate family, God, children and her grandchildren, God, that you would touch them and you would bless them, Lord. Father, we're here. Lord, we're here, God, to, to lift your name up. We know what's sown in tears is reaped in joy, God. We know that a seed must first go to the ground and die for there to bring life, Lord, that, that you bring beauty from ashes. You conquered death and you came to die, Lord, that we might have life, Lord. Use Aunt Michelle's coming home to you, Jesus, to bring life in our hearts. So, Father, we love you and ask for, for you to, to bless this service. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Hey, grab the people, <coughs> stand with us. Uh, number 10, How Great Thou Art. We're going to start singing. Uh, what are we singing? The first, uh, all of it, the whole thing, the whole thing. That is going to surely lead us. Let's see. 
Michelle Miranda was born on July 15, 1963, to Anna and Luis Miranda. She was the youngest of five, the baby of her family at the time. Her parents separated later in life, and she moved with her father to Puerto Rico. She taught herself Spanish in the ninth grade in public school and got all A's and one B, all while learning the Spanish language. Her time with her dad and his family was well spent. She learned how to cook Puerto Rican food and was fluent in the Spanish language. Her dad remarried and added two additional siblings for Michelle to love. After a year, Michelle was ready to live with her mom again in New Jersey. While in New Jersey, she finished high school and soon fell in love with David Meese, a fun, charismatic guy who drove a motorcycle and could fix anything. They were married in May of 1983. After a couple of years, they welcomed their first child, Anna Michelle. A few years later, they welcomed the son, David East Jr. They moved to Mississippi for several years where they gardened and had several pets. Michelle loved her house, garden, kids, and pets. While in Mississippi, they were blessed with one more child, Amanda Miranda. Michelle loved being a mother and wife, but her crowning moment was being a grandmom to Elisa, Layla, Liliana, Brody, Sammy, Finn, Amelia, Emmeline, and Brooks. She FaceTimed her Hawaii grandkids almost every day. She loved having her local grandkids sleep over. Michelle always had the biggest smile on her face when she held one of these little ones. Michelle found Christ as a teenager. Her faith was always important to her. She made her sure her children were in church and involved. For recent years, she proudly served at her son's church, New Life Bible Church of Worthington, Kentucky. Michelle helped clean the buildings and served in other areas. Recently, Michelle celebrated her 60th birthday with all her children, their spouses, and their children. It was such a special moment for the family. But soon after, Michelle was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. She cherished the week she had left, using every moment to love her family and friends. God sent an angel, Bob Tipman, to hold her hand in her darkest moments. On October 10th, Michelle entered the hospice center as her body began to fail. The next afternoon, Michelle was welcomed into heaven's gates by her savior, and greeted by her family and friends who went before her. The family has peace and comfort knowing their mother is at rest in the arms of Jesus. We're gonna do
through a song, Layla and myself, and um, and then my wife will come and read a poem uh, right afterwards. This song, um, one of the last things Mom had said to me was, uh, I knew the words. Um, Mom has said to me this after she got out of the hospital, after finding out that she was going to um, not have that long to live. Um, she gets home and we're, we bring the family over for the first time to see her. And it was a joyful time and a lot of love. And as I was sitting in Mom's normal chair, I looked over to Mom and she's playing with Amelia and she said this statement to me. She said, you won't forget me, will you? One of the things that Mom loved was her mother, never forgot her mother. And I don't know why she would think that she could be forgotten, right? Um, but this song is called Never Be Forgotten. And so she asked that Anna and I and the grandkids would sing I, I wanted to sing this song because, man, I'll tell you, uh, we've been through a lot, her, her and I. Life has been crazy, and uh, I promise this, I'll not forget the ups, the downs, the funs, the chaos, and I definitely won't forget those last moments that we got to spend together. Faith in the Savior made us steadfast to stand. 
the gospel she shares is what she knew, that Christ died for sinners, his love ever true. Elegant spirit was love's central flame, our hope was in Christ, and he was redemptive dream. Through life's many trials, she never did sway, but by the far shadow, she fervently prayed. With her children and brands, her love did abound, in the warmth of her embrace, God's love was found. Though challenges faced her, with Christ as her guide, she walked in his grace with him by her side. Now above, she rejoices, lifting on the floor, gathering on her his throne on the golden shore. The gospel's sweet promise for her has come true. In Christ's loving, loving arms, she's, new, she's been made anew. Eternal in glory, where praises resound, her faith now made sight, for true love is found. Our mother, our beacon, now radiant and bright, shines forth in God's kingdom in his glorious light. Now we're going to have a moment for uh, some reflections and uh, Amanda. Yeah, because Amanda's recording. Like you were saying, it's about recording. was a very great mom. She had a lot of her struggles, but she loved us unconditionally. And her grandkids, of course, I wanted to take the time to write down what I'd like to say, but I just didn't get the chance to. Um, but I know that she'll be greatly missed, and we're not going to forget about her. There's no way. Like, the only thing I can do is try to share the love that she taught me with the people that I know. And be, be a better mom because of all of the small things that she battled. And I know I can do that. And Dad, I love her so, 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 so much. Yes. And I know that she loved you too, so, so much. Okay, so um, I just am so certain that Aunt Michelle would be desiring for us to, to know what she knows. What we see in part, she now sees fully. And I can stand here with confidence on this day and, and share that it would be her deepest desire to see us more rightly and humbly and intentionally glorifying the Lord in our lives. And I'm certain that she would want us to know that soon and very soon, even if it's in 60 years from now, that we'll stand before the Lord and we'll give an account. And if she could speak to us this afternoon, this evening, she, she, would, she would tell us to, to redeem the time and to lay hold of, of eternal life. And, and we could have that by way of, of Believing in what Christ has done, believing what God's word says about who he is. We can grab hold of that today. But we could do that and still leave so much 
on the table. We could walk away from, from greater things that the Lord might do through our lives. I mean, we could we could opt out for some some form of, of lower living. And I and I just hope that I could live my life in such a way that would make my aunt proud. That it would be worthy of what the Lord has done for us. All of it. In every area. And my aunt raised a family that, that bef well before I knew the Lord, that pointed me to Jesus. And because of what she did and, and the importance of God's word that, that she saw, she saw the importance of the Lord and his word, and she instilled that into her kids. And it wasn't always perfect, and it wasn't always pretty, but it was, she was faithful to that call as a mother to do that, to, to help in her part, to shepherd her family towards things of eternal life. And they sowed seeds in my life, and those seeds now, all these years later, are bearing fruit, and, I, and I'm, I'm grateful for Aunt Michelle's legacy and for the niece family. And, and I'm, because of, 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 of what they've done, I've been able to climb up on to her shoulders and, and continue to, to try to speak to people like you and I, broken people who are in desperate need of another touch of grace from the graceful God. So, amen. Amen. From our family in Puerto Rico. They came down a couple weeks ago and spent time with mom when we found out. And uh, our, our papi is, um, uh, we don't know where, but he's got dementia. We don't know what, not far, but he don't even remember mom gonna be dying. She, he knows it, it doesn't click with him, so he already forgot. And uh, so he's not here. They're, they didn't come back just to save the the chaos, right? Um, if there's anybody else that would like to share now, jump out now. Uh, otherwise, I'll have to share and then we'll, we'll close out with Pastor Kenny and, and a song. Um, I'll just, I'll share this with you. Um, a lot of you are here because of whether it's the impact that my family has had or mom has had specifically on me. Troy Z is an example of how you know, the legacy is from our grandparents to our mother, to our father, right? To, to me, to cousins, to, it, it's, it's, it's fruits that she, I don't think, will under, well, she understands them way better than we do now, because he's like saying, hey, listen, you had no clue, but here, look what you did, right? Uh, well done, thou good and faithful servant, right? And um, I'll say this, um, if you know anything about our stories, right? Uh, 
chaos, right? <laughs> chaos in our lives. Um, there's something I learned from mom. Um, I got that, got to experience it after she died. I got a phone call from Puerto Rico with not family actually, people that were bragging about the relationship that they had with mom years and years ago and how they keep with her on Facebook and how big of an impact she was in their life. And then we saw even at hospice, her therapist show up that she had just met a new therapist in January. And the impact that she had on the therapist made the therapist come to say goodbye in hospice. You don't get it, but that's not how it's supposed to work. You feel me? That's not it at all. But it was what the impact. The thing is, is she would go, and some of you don't know the stories, but man, it would be maybe on clockwork every four months. I would be taking her into a hospital, getting her checked in to get psychologically set and refixed and aligned, right? And yet she would leave there the most favorites of all of the, the nurses and the doctors and, and the patients all loved her every time, every time. And what's hard is that we always dealt with some of that chaos and we didn't actually get to enjoy a lot of that, right? Um, I'm thankful though. I'm thankful that she knew Jesus. And I'm, I'm so thankful of what she tried to do for us. The biggest thing that we got from this woman is this is her strength. She did not stop. She continued. She persevered. She persevered. And she struggled in life. But can I tell you something? It was God that continued to push her forward. Push her forward. She continued to be in the Word. She continued, even when she couldn't understand it, it didn't make sense. She would open it up. She would try to read it, and she would continually to do those things. And she wasn't perfect. She'd get mad at me after I preach a sermon and think that I was talking about her or something, right? I mean, like you don't even understand. Like we 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 I had to put a group chat together to to have my sister be like, "No, mom, he actually said really good things about you," because she like you just never knew. But can I say something? Is that she had a continual love that just never ended, especially for these grandkids. On her Facebook, if you go there right now, it says it in the title. Who knows what it says? Number one, grandma. Number one job oh, okay. is grandma. <laughs> that was her number one job. That's why she lived. So guys, I thank you for being here. If you want stories, if you want to hear more things, or stay in after. I just want to thank God for her life. Philippians 1 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. And uh, there are going to be days where you're going to want to have a conversation or or actually hear a complaint or, or, or something, you know what I mean? And it ain't going to be there, but my hope is in the Lord. And I know this is that one day we will rejoin and I will see her again. So thank you for being here. Um, we, it's been, my sister and I had the same feeling. It's been a weird, like Memorial Day service coming. We got to say bye two weeks ago. We, we dealt with a lot of emotions two weeks ago. We had breakdowns throughout the weeks, right? It's, it's been crazy for us. But what means the world to me is the people that have traveled the 10 hours. You know, I gotta mention your mom. I gotta mention you. This is my second mother right here. My brother, Patrick. Mama, this is her, mom got so mad when I called her mom. <laughs> like, I'll tell you right now, it, she loved you, you know that. Because our families, Anna, Tanisha isn't here, right? Like, we're like a family. It's, we've been together since here. She used to tell me I want to see your report cards, right? And she would just be like, you only got one mother. Like, she was... <laughs> My mom used to fight people all the time. She was psycho. Her and Aunt Annie, goodness gracious. <laughs> you can go through stories. All right, I'll wrap it up. Rocky, Rocky's on his way. Rocky is a cousin. They're, they're the ones that got stuck in Little Joey. Um, man, I'll tell you this. Um, a lot of you came very far. 
people that have just connected with us, that loved her, knew her, knew what she meant to us. And you coming so far means a lot. People that have taken time from your days to come and be here with us, it means the world to us. So thank you so much. Um, afterwards, we're eating, so don't go hang out. Um, Mario just shows you the people of love. She went in there, and she was talking all about Dave. You know my son. You know, he does all your stuff. And, and he's like, yeah, yeah. And he, he had a great memory with her about a couple weeks prior to her dying. And um, he gave all the food, loved on us, paid for that for us. And it was amazing. I thank him down in Portsmouth, Toy Road. I love him. Um, but so stay, eat the food, because I don't want to take all of it home. It's a lot. And um, Kenny, would you care um, to come up? He's going to share from God's Word. Wait. Yes? Does someone else want to? I, I asked, but if somebody does, please don't let me stop you. Come on up. Yeah. Um, a couple people. So you come first, and then Finn Roflet is going to speak. Okay. And what about, hey, what about you cool kids up here? <laughs> Name us girls. No. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. I'm Olivia. I'm uh, one of Michelle's friends in recovery and in Christ. Um, I met Michelle uh, her first day of coming to Portsmouth, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm from over here in Kentucky. And uh, we was laughing about our, our accent. We was comparing our accents uh, at this uh, recovery program that we're in. Uh, you know, uh, I was honored to be her sponsor for a while. And then I was honored to be her friend the rest of the time. And we'd argue and we'd cry. And but we never stopped helping each other. We never stopped having each other's back because that's what you do. You don't give up on your friends. In our world, our friends become our family. The Musketeers, me and her endorse, and we adopted Miss Diane into our crew. Uh, that's our road dogs. And uh, we got to go to uh, Red Lobster. Um, right before everything hit the fan, and uh, it really meant a lot to all of us. I'd never been to Red Lobster before, and she says, you're the one, <laughs> because I'm taking care of my mom over in Kentucky, so I didn't get to spend a lot of the yachts and nights that we used to have, and parties, pizza parties, or just whatever, getting together and playing the OCDs of the old music that we grew up listening to and singing with it and dancing and you know just being silly and having fun and enjoying life and uh, we'd be going to a meeting or something and, and Dave would call and I just check me in mom <laughs> check me in on mom while well, I'm with Olivia <laughs> I think if he knew she was with me she wouldn't we weren't getting into nothing but a meeting or church or uh, J Lab or Rejoice and Recovery, different programs that uh, we were involved in. And uh, I love you guys. And she loved her babies very much. All of them. And if you were her friend, you were her extended family, and that's just the way it was. I told her it wasn't, wasn't just a Jersey thing or Puerto Rican thing. That's how us Kentuckians roll too, so. Uh, she meant a lot to my mom, too. And uh, my mom don't like a lot of my friends, but uh, my mom's in her last stages and can go at any time, but uh, she would have Michelle come over and come in and stuff and uh, that told me a lot about what she thought about Michelle and Doris. And uh, we're just family. And you're all our family now, too. That's, that's just the way it is. And uh, thank you all for letting me see my buddy before she left. She woke up, me and Doris. <laughs> and uh, that got her laughing. The last 
big smile I got out of her. And she was fading back off. I told her, I said, well, I'll see you on the other side. I said, try to save the seat for all of us in the front row. And she cracked up because she thought that was hilarious that I would even suggest that we'd make it to the front row of heaven, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but as long as we make it through the gates, that's all we care about, okay? <laughs> and uh, thank you all for letting me be here today. Olivia and Doris came and spent time with mom in hospice. And they, they were determined to make sure she woke up to say bye. And they were yelling at her, getting her to wake up. <laughs> and it was awesome. And, uh, you guys know? So first of all, I want to thank everyone for coming. Especially um, we drove really far. We drove an 8-hour, 50-minute trip in like 10 to 11 hours. <laughs> But um, I know, like, many of you drove far, and some of you are just a little older, you're still in your family. Um, but a couple things I want to say. First thing is, if you didn't know me, but do you know why for 16 years? And I was looking forward to being home and closer to family. And when I heard, they cut her open and there was stage four cancer. I just was kind of upset and I was in a very raw emotional state. And I said to my husband, it's not fair. I thought I was gonna have Christmas with her or Thanksgiving. And you know, God saw fit to take her home. And it's not fair because she gets to be in heaven and she gets to enjoy Jesus and I'm still here without her. <laughs> so the blessing in all of this, even though it's not fair, I feel like sometimes, is that I know she's healed and mentally she's healed, spiritually she's healed, physically she's healed. She didn't have to suffer long. So I praise the Lord for that. And then my son wanted to share something about grandma. He used to be my grandma, and I miss her, and I love her, and and I um I used to have her, um and I used to um I used to um I used to um love her, and and I. I think I have a finer story, but I'm going to help everybody out. Um, we lived in Hawaii for 16 years, and the first time we came back was at Christmas time, and not that story. Um, and this is what during one of her downsides, this is one where the season where she was struggling in. And so she invited Ann and I over to watch Law and Order on a Saturday afternoon. And this, like I said, this is one of her downsides. And she says, just in case you guys see a cat here, there's a cat running through the house. <laughs> and I look at my wife, I'm like, a cat in this house. What's she saying? And so we're like, I don't know, three episodes into a Law and Order, like, spinoff show. We're just watching for like three hours, and I'm sitting in a chair, and I see this thing out of the corner of my eye, and sure enough, it was a black cat. I looked at my wife, and I said, there really was a cat in this house, and she wasn't lying to us. So, you know, um, she had a lot of ups and downs. Um, verse comes to my mind, always about your mom, is the Bible, where the Bible says in Proverbs that a just man falls seven times. Yeah. 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 Is that he rises up again? So every time I read that verse, I always think of your mom. You know, she, she made memories for you guys, and so 
But there really was a cat in the house, I promise you. Sure. We, uh, Barb and I, it's a fact. Uh, mom, you know, mom was like an energizer battery. She never quit, she never died. Yep. Even when she tried to do it herself. She did it. Like we, we've done this before, right? And we were praying at the hospital, and God, she came back to life. It was insane. So, man, uh, memory is falling seven times. Eyes up again, 100% now. Thank you for that. That was facts. Mm -hmm. Any of you guys want to say anything? You don't have to. It's okay. All right. And, um, well, brother. Share something there. Uh, Kenny uh, and I served together. Got to serve with him. He's a good friend, a mentor. Uh, he knew mom, and uh, I appreciate him being willing to lead our service with this. And then our daughters and Anna have a song. Uh, I can only imagine Joey and Rocky. Um, you guys can come, please come up. You want to say something at all? You can. You don't have to. You don't have to. You two were the favorite. I'm sorry, Kenny. I'm sorry for everybody. Listen, it's it's okay if you gotta go. Don't worry. But uh, oh my gosh, I haven't seen Rocky in 25 years. I don't know. So Joey and I just drove about eight hours, right on the border, coming over the Kanawha River. I think it was Morgantown. Yeah. It was a bad accident. Two hours in, I was on road 68 and clock uh, for two hours that day, so it was brutal. Um, but we got a lot of chance to talk about things. <laughs> demons in our family, demons in our family, things that we have done, that you guys have done. Um, Uncle Joey, Phil. Joey, Uncle Louis, my mom, and my Aunt Janet. Now, Joey's the last one standing, Uncle Joey. Um, at the end of the day, we both said, why did we want to come? We're going to drive. We're going to drive back tomorrow. One, for our parents. Do some great thing to do. It's family. And three, it was our Aunt Michelle. So she was very close to us age wise. So at the end of the day, it was just talking about Aunt Michelle. And we haven't talked to her in a long time and everything, but it's still our uh, Aunt Michelle. And I talked to her two weeks ago, right before I went to the hospital, and it was like nectar. So at the end of the day, we came just to be here and say, I love you, Dad, we're going to miss you already. And then uh, sorry we didn't get a chance to be with him more. What about you? We did. Yeah. Like you said, pretty much just about every night. We, we talked. <laughs> a lot. A lot in the car. And we look at everything as, you know, the situation is horrible, but I look at it as, For those who don't know, Aunt Michelle, and I'm sure you know this better than anybody else, grew up in a situation that wasn't ideal. Let's just say it that way. Mm -hmm. But she's always made the best of what she could do in a situation that she was given, right? Um, so as we start really looking at it and we really look at it from a different perspective, of Rocky and I being the oldest in the group to see everything and experience everything. Um, it's all part of a journey, you know? Um, and it's part of our journey to experience it as well. But if you look at it as understanding where they were and how they were brought up, they did the best that they could given the situation and the cards they were dealt. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where we started looking back at Dan Michelle. She was witty and funny. 
And I'll share a funny story. I had to be five years old. Aunt Michelle started just driving, and she parked in the Berlin Ecker Drugs. This is Berlin, New Jersey, by the way. <laughs> the Berlin Ecker Drugs, she parked there, and it was me and my sister Kara in the car, and a cop pulled up, right? So she's parked illegally in front of the drugstore, <laughs> and she went inside to go get it. The cop comes out, and he starts writing a ticket. And I remember Aunt Michelle came back to the car and lit it because, you know, we were in the car. And she asked the officer, she's like, well, would you want the kids to move the car? You know? And then Aunt Michelle, the cop said something funny, and Aunt Michelle came right back at him. I mean, respectfully, it wasn't disrespectful. But it was just so funny because she was witty about, like, I can't let a five year old move the car. I was only there for five seconds. She tried. And she tried. Eventually, the cop just walked away. He was like, <laughs> she was so relentless that she just would not give up. And she just kind of, she won the battle. And I sat there, and I was like, wow, that was impressive. When I was scared, I was hiding underneath the seat. <laughs> So no, she's, she's a beautiful person. She's a beautiful person, and she did a beautiful job for the kids as well. One of the last things that Phil and I have talked about this in the car ride is um, as you get older, you start learning more and more that the most valuable thing that you have is your time. Time to give to people in your life that are important, maybe not so important, but you can waste things, you can throw them away. The most valuable thing you have in your time and who you spend it with. So that you can have the most materialistic things in life. But when you are in your last moments and you're surrounded by the people that you spent time, quality time with, that's your life. That's your life. And that's wonderful. So. Um, just so you know how much they meant to mom, uh, they were, for me, to look at as my role models growing up. And um, these guys mean a lot to us. I'm so thankful they made it. So thank you all for being here, too. Uh, every one of you guys are special. Kenny, you ready to, to teach something from Hannah's Word? Just lift us up with that. And, um, then hang around, because these girls are going to sing an amazing song that you probably all know. And uh, they're going to do a great job. When Dave and Barb came to uh, our church, Michelle came with me. And one of the things I remember vividly about Michelle was she would get mad at David and she would come and tell me. <laughs> like I was the principal or something. I was going to get him. And speaking of the Energizer Bunny, have you spent any time with David? <laughs> yeah. You have, you know that he is indeed the Energizer Bunny. I think about all that's been said this evening. And you know, in Ecclesiastes, Solomon tells us it's better to come to the house of mourning than it is to the table of feast. Mm -hmm. Because the living take it to heart. And one reoccurring theme that we've heard this evening is that she has struggled. Everyone in this room will struggle with something. And I am so thankful that it is not based on what we do or we have done, but it's based on the precious blood of Jesus Christ shed on Calvary. And because Michelle believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, she is now better than she has ever been. The Bible says, for to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I think if she could tell us three things tonight, I think she would tell us these things. She would tell us the words of Solomon as he's giving counsel to his sons. He's writing to his sons about wisdom. He gives them three things that will help them no matter what they're facing. Michelle's gone, and we, we cannot do anything about it. Fact is, if we knew what she was experiencing right now, we wouldn't want her to come back. And so I think these three things can apply to this situation. I think it's very apropos for tonight. I think she would tell us, first of all, from the words of Solomon in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge him, and he 
shall direct thy paths. The first thing she would tell us is to trust him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's always been about faith. Always been about faith, not about works. For everyone in here has sinned and will sin. God has a plan. He is sovereign. God has a plan and you and I need him because we don't always know his plan. And while Michelle is experiencing joy, while she is in the very presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you are here. And your hearts are broken. Many of you have driven thousands of miles to be here. And in that drive, you have no doubt reflected upon all the good times, all the bad times. And sometimes it's difficult for us to understand and trust the Lord in a difficult situation, but it's the very thing that's going to get us through. There's no magic sentence. There's no magic statement. There's no magic pill that can take away the pain. And the reason... The pain is so great is because the love was so deep. So I think Michelle would tell us to trust in the Lord it's worth it. When we struggle daily, trust Him. When you struggle tonight, trust Him. When everyone goes back to their homes, you have those thoughts where you miss your mother, your grandmother, your aunt, your sister, your friend, and you feel alone. Trust in the Lord. Trust him. He's our source of comfort. He's our source of strength. And he is our source of hope. In times like these, we need to trust him. The second thing I think we can see from the text and what Michelle might tell us is do not lean on your own understanding. As humans, we like to rationalize everything. Immediately when you get the bad news, what can we do? How can we change this? After she breathed her last breath, you might find yourself thinking, well, if we could have done this or we could have done that or just this situation would have changed. That's leaning on our own understanding. Everyone in this room will die. Every one of us will make the same journey Michelle has already made. And because one day when she heard the glorious gospel and she believed in Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, the Bible says that she would pass from death unto life. Not because she was good, not because she did great works or did those things, but because she believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're here tonight and you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to know that he loves you. He loves you with the same love he loved Michelle. For God so loved the world that he gave. His love is manifested or revealed in that he gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and for me. And the only thing you can do is believe in him. Believe that he is the son of God. That he did come to this earth. That he did die on the cross. And he died for my sins. And he died for your sins. And he was buried. And he arose from the grave. Victorious over death, hell, and the grave. If you've never trusted in Jesus, you can tonight. You can open your heart, and by faith, you can accept what he did on the cross of Calvary for you. Tonight, you can, right where you sit, you can open your heart, and you can acknowledge your sin, 
You can repent of that sin. You can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can ask him to come into your life, to forgive you of your sins, and to save you just like Michelle did. Are you going to be perfect after that? No. But you know what? When God looks at you, having believed in Jesus Christ, he no longer sees all the struggles, all the things that you have done. He sees you through the crimson lens of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And his righteousness, not yours, his righteousness. And that's why we can so confidently say that Michelle is with the Lord. But you'll lean on your own understanding and say, but it can't be that easy. But it is. Jesus bore all of our sin on himself when he died on the cross of Calvary. I've had people tell me, Pastor, you're not supposed to ask God why. I find that interesting. Because Jesus, when he was on the cross, asked God, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And the Bible tells us that he never sinned. So it's not a sin to ask God why. You can ask God why. But you must lean on him for his answer. Trust in the Lord. Do not lean on your own understanding. The last thing I think she would tell us is this. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your paths. The psalmist said that, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. She's experienced death. We're experiencing the shadow of death. And as we walk through that valley, what we need more than anything is we need guidance. We need direction. We need someone to help us through this valley. And it's interesting, in, in the Hebrew, in this, in this text, the word acknowledge, we think acknowledge means to just uh, identify or just, you know, come up and say it. But the word acknowledge actually means in the Hebrew, it means to seek, to know. As we're walking through this valley of the shadow of death, we should seek to know him. We should seek to know him. In difficult times like this, it's difficult to seek the Lord. But in Scripture, whenever instruction is given, God always follows it up with a promise. And he said, if you will seek to know him in this time, in this valley, he will direct your path. I was young. My mother died at age... 52. She had a massive stroke. When she had a stroke, I was in Camp Ashland, Nebraska with the Army National Guard. When I got home, she was already pretty much brain dead. And I remember those days, and I remember thinking, where do I go from here? I remember being in St. Mary's Hospital in Huntington, West Virginia. It was a Catholic hospital, and they had a little uh, prayer room or whatever, and I went into the there to pray, and I remember I was praying, and I was so exhausted, I fell asleep. And when I woke up, I was so ashamed of myself because I had fallen asleep. The gamut of emotions, the highs, the lows. What I needed was direction. I remember in the shower crying, thinking, God, where do I go from here? promise is he will direct your path and that's exactly what you need again I would ask you if you've never trusted Jesus Christ open your heart right where you are receive him as your Lord and Savior if you want to talk about it I'm sure Dave, myself or any number of people in this room would talk to you and show you what the Bible says about that afterwards family I would look at you and I would say this I would tell you, treasure those memories. 
There'll be days when you're driving down the road and all of a sudden you'll see something and you'll laugh because you'll think of your mother, your grandmother, and in the next minute you'll be crying. It's okay. It's okay. I would say surround yourself with family and friends. You all know how much family meant to your mother and to your grandmother. You know how much, I mean, several of you have driven so far. Support each other, help each other, love one another. But most importantly, turn to the Lord Amen. and get his help. Father, we love you. I come to you and ask you on behalf of this family that you would so saturate them with your goodness and your mercy. I pray right now that you would just wrap your loving arms around them, that you would heal them, Lord, that you would give them strength and comfort, that you would plant in their heart knowing the confidence, knowing that Michelle is with you. Oh God, help us. Help us to trust in you. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but acknowledge you and follow your leading through this deep, dark valley. Please bless them. In Jesus' name.
Start a whole, one whole day up there with her in hospice and just hung out there, held her hand. So did Lily. They love their grandma. Man, I was probably a little jealous right now because grandma was the most favorite grandma. You <laughs> see, he don't understand that she's grandma too because we call her Nana. So yeah. yeah. But uh, Layla. I know that she loved each of us because the night as we all always like go over her house and we would always play Aussie and whenever we sleep over we'd always fight whose turn it was. <laughs> and um Oh, the 
I find myself standing in the sun, I can only imagine, I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> to me for a long time. His name is Reno. It's my only nine of the brothers. I don't even know. Man. It goes with that. JR and I met probably around eighth grade, ninth grade, and uh, uh, he was just as close to mom as, as anybody. He loved her. He was there for her. He supported her scripturally when she needed it through the hard times. Him and Reno have been there and gone through all the chaos of our lives. And so I'm thankful that he's here to pray, to close us in prayer. And uh, we're going to have food. So he's going to ask God to bless the food for us. And, uh, I'm going to, when we're done, play the video one last time. It's 10 or 10 minutes long. You don't have to stay if you don't. But I didn't get a chance to actually just sit here and enjoy it. I'm going to do that. Y'all can go downstairs if you like, but I'm going to listen to the music one more time, watch the video. Anna and I, she did a great job um, putting that together. And last night, um, just broke down crying watching it. She asked me to watch it, I'm sure it was good. And uh, just enjoy those memories. So, JR, close this in that. I'll go over there, get that ready, queued up. And I love you. All right, <clears throat> I wanted to share this verse. Proverbs 31 talks about a virtuous woman. And as I was thinking about this verse, I definitely believe Michelle, oh, she fits this criteria. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her kids loved her. That makes her virtuous. It made me think of this verse too, and normally I didn't think about it for a second, but in Hebrews 13, 17, the Bible says, Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. And as I think about where she is right now and what she's doing, I'm 100% confident that the account that she's given to the Lord for the children that she's raised and the grandchildren that she's had an opportunity to rear up, she's able to do that with joy. And so I know the Lord is talking to her and letting her know, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this day. Lord, thank you for the life that we get to celebrate. Lord, everything that she was, everything that she is, the, the memories, the love, the care, everything that's going to be passed on through family, through memories, Lord, she won't be forgotten, not one bit. Lord, thank you that she saw fit to accept you as her Savior, and God, and she get to be with you tonight. Lord, we're thankful. Lord, we have hope that one day we'll all be reunited with her. And Lord, we're thankful that right now she's reunited with those that she's loved and those that have gone before her. Lord, I pray you bless the evening. I pray that you would keep us safe, keep those safe that are going to be traveling and going back into their lives. And Lord, I pray that we all would just take a little bit of her memory, Lord, her life, her legacy, and that we would use that use that to be a blessing to others, to lead others to the Lord. God, I know that's what she would want, Lord. We're thankful for her life. I pray that you bless us tonight, Lord. We thank you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
I took the supermarket flyers from the windowsill Threw the day old tea from the cup Packed up the photo album that you had made Memories of a life that's been loved Took the Garrett Wilson cars and stuffed animals Put the old ginger beer down the sink Dad always told me don't you cry when you're down But mum there's a tear every time that I wake Oh I'm in pieces it's tearing me up but I know A heart that's broke is a heart that's been loved So I'll sing hallelujah you were an angel in the shape of my mom When I fell down you'd be there holding me up Spread your wings as you go And when God takes you back You'll say hallelujah You're home Floss the pillow Made the bed, stacked the chairs up, folded your nightgowns neatly in a case. John said he drive, then put his hand on my cheek and wiped a tear from the side of my face. Now that I see the world as you did, as I know. Sing hallelujah. You were an angel in the shape of my mom. When I fell down, you'd be there holding me up. Spread your wings as you go. And when God takes you back, you say hallelujah.